Hey everyone, welcome to today's body review where I'm checking out Martin's Harley Benton SC550 Deluxe. So as you can see, this guitar is obviously inspired by Gibson Les Paul. It's a classical single cut shape. Um, it looks pretty traditional, I would say, yeah. except for the heel joint, which is more uh, like the modern series of Gibson. Yeah, but, it's a, yeah, it has an improved access mm -hmm. on the higher frets. Yeah, it's definitely not that chunky. Um, yeah, Martin, I think this is not the newest model. When did you get no. it? I got it 2017. Okay. It's the second, second SC550 I've got. The first one I had to send back. Mm -hmm. It had quite a few problems. Um, the binding was yes, well, damaged. It was like chipping away. It was like chipping away with yeah. uh, sharp edges that really cut into my hand. They okay. were not really not fine to play. It was pretty much unplayable, mm -hmm. especially with the thumb over always uh, cutting into the. Okay, flesh. yeah, sure. Yeah, it's up here. Um, so that was really a no go for me. It had yeah. also. Uh, bubbles inside of the finish and this like on the body and yeah the on the body well. and also on the binding over here mm -hmm. it was under the clear coat uh, okay. also scratches under the clear coat the clear yeah. coat was fine but uh, yeah that's a so, no-go overall uh, yeah the things combined but uh, to Thomas defense it was absolutely no problem sending it back but that's it's good. always something when people ask me, would you recommend Tali Benton? Mm -hmm. It's always something I say, where are you from? Because if you don't have really the possibility to send the guitar back, if yeah. it comes in the shape, I got that one guitar, well... That, especially when you're overseas, right? Overseas, yeah. yeah. Then it's really a hassle, because from Austria to Germany, that's no that's big nothing deal. And didn't have to pay anything, just yeah. got that's... a receipt put it on the box again, send it back and got the new one and this one This one looks fine! <laughs> was better? Yeah. Yeah. Still not perfect? Still not perfect. Okay. I had to do a few things uh, to it. I really like the finish. I think the top looks stunning. Yeah. It's, it says... the, other one, the other one also had this nice top. Yeah, the flame so looks the really... Top, the top was really nice. flawless. Also it's, on the first one? This is a Tobacco Burst, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. Tobacco Burst. It's a Tobacco Burst version. It's cool. Um, the body, mahogany, looks very much like mahogany. So. Yeah. <clears throat> mahogany neck as well. Do you know what the fretboard material is? Uh, it looks like rosewood. or No, it's stomach. not It's, it's uh, not rosewood. It's not real rosewood. It was not real rosewood back then already. Okay. So, uh, it looks nice and dark. Something. Yeah. So the overall aesthetics match that of a yeah. Epiphone or Gibson, I'd say. And okay. The classic style. The vintage tuners. Yeah. Also look pretty cool. Yeah. So what were the flaws on this one? Well, uh, on this one, the setup was not really good. Okay. So I had to do a fret level on everything. Okay. I did also take a little bit of the edges on the fret ends. Uh, um, on both sides? On both sides. Okay. Um, I did not have the Stumac file back then, uh, ah, so it's yeah. not that as good as it could be, but... I honestly can't feel any f uh, sharp edges now, so I think you did a good job there, and feels really nice. Um, I've played it before a couple of minutes, and I really liked it. The, the, playability and the feel of the guitar and then I asked Martin what he did and he said yeah the fret ends of course because they really feel good so you can't expect that from a Harley Benton out of the box it's not guaranteed it's not guaranteed yeah so they were not bad by any means so it was not that they just, were sharp but yeah. there was improvement it's just you had to put some work I had to put this. a little work into this mm -hmm. also um, yeah, as mentioned, I had to level the frets. I had mm -hmm. six or seven high frets on okay. it That's that I had lot, to yeah. level. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then also truss rod adjustment, then 
Uh, I had to file a little bit on the nut as well, so okay. to get a little bit better. Okay, was it not cut correctly? Yeah, at the, the, the outgoing part on the end over here, maybe we can do a little bit of a close-up sure. over here. Was, yeah, it did not have this bend over, so it okay. got easier stuck. Yeah, um, you, when you tune it, it's the plink sound. Yeah, the plink usually. sound mm -hmm. was was there. That's not here anymore. Okay. Um, and I was not happy with the pickups in it. At yeah, all. that's the big mod you did with the guitar, yeah. right? Not the setup part. That, that will be another video upcoming. Nice. I have. Do, do you wanna ex explain the, the the basic things you did? Yeah, I did a spoiler. 50s, <laughs> spoiler alert! I did the fifties wiring with the Tone Rider AC2 pickups. Uh, some of you may have seen the video I did with Franz, where I've modified his Sheraton, yeah. and I really liked those pickups then. And I thought for myself, I have to get them for this guitar. And how much are they? About one hundred euros. Both, both together. So the set costs 100 euros. Yeah. And you put it in a... How much was the guitar? 250, 250 euros. So 350 plus some work and you get a really great playing guitar. Yeah. And yeah, obviously the pots, there are also the orange drop capacitors in it. So it's a it little was a bit, bit more. more. It was a yeah. bit more. It has 22 frets and the standard Gibson scale yeah. and everything. Is there anything it, else to the mention? Neck, the neck, neck shape, shape is probably something like a 60s taper 60s. neck. Yeah. That's not chunky at all. No. It's nice and round. That's also what they advertised already back then, that mm -hmm. it's a modern playing uh, slim neck. Okay, yeah. And I can confirm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a C shape, so it's not a D, D at all. So no. it's completely round on the back side. And yeah. Are you happy uh, with the stock tuners? Um. Actually, after I did a setup of everything, I'm much more right. happy than I'm n now that I've been. Okay. Um, the only thing that I, yeah, probably have to say is they feel nice, they turn smooth, they mm -hmm. turn evenly, but for my taste, they almost turn too smooth. If okay. I lay the guitar like it is on the couch or something, they turn so easily that it adjusts the tuners okay. there already. So that's yeah. a little bit annoying. Too much on... play, a little bit. Maybe. No, no play at all. It's just that they turn so smoothly and okay. so easily that if you put it down and it has just a slight angle over here, it mm -hmm. pushes on it and it's out of tune. Okay. Other than that, also very different from a Gibson Les Paul. The weight? The weight. It's. Yeah very very light um, that comes from that it Can has... hold it for a second I, I just want to check if it's heavier or lighter than my Gibson it's probably about the same this is a studio for 2017 with ultra modern weight relief and it's pretty light I'd say they're quite similar in weight which one is heavier I would say the Gibson is just a tad just a heavier. Just a tad heavier with ultra modern weight relief. So yeah, um, it's really, really on the light side. As you can see in these close-ups, pretty much both sides are hollow. You can get over there all the way up to the horn. On the other side where the toggle switch is, it's all the way down, also along the center. So it's pretty much like a 335 or 339 where you have like a center block in the middle and the left and left and right side are hollow so yeah that definitely explains the weight yeah of this guitar but i <clears throat> don't particularly like heavy guitars so <laughs> i'm definitely fine with it i'm happy that my gibson is uh, rather light because yeah I mostly play fender guitars and they mm. are Definitely lighter because of the different body woods and thickness. Yeah, but so. it's still something different to consider. Yeah, when of you're buying it, it's if you want a heavy guitar, some players might prefer that. That's yeah, yeah, and it's not the same construction. No, no, no. Of course, the resonance is different of the guitar. 
yeah. and yeah, this just sounds differently. So, yeah, should we head on to the sound samples, to some playing? Let's get to some playing.
Lucas, what are your first impressions after playing it? It plays nicely. Uh, the neck, the C-shaped slim taper-ish, uh, feels great. The fret ends, you did a good job there. There's Thanks. nothing sticking out, feels, feels great. Didn't recognize any sharp notes or anything. The setup is awesome. So overall the playability is great. Uh, I said it before, I like the weight of the guitar because it's uh, on the light side, because it's yeah, the, the weight relief construction. And what I liked most was the pickups, or were the pickups. I really enjoyed them. I think they have a lot of clarity. They react great with the volume knob. It's really nice. We just had one setup on the bass breaker 007 behind us, and I just the clear tones, everything you were hearing was just the volume off, just yeah. taking the volume off, maybe adjusting the tone a little bit. And yeah, it's it's really great. You get, it's just uh, the just three positions with neck, middle and bridge. But in the middle where you can uh, mix neck and bridge volumes, you, you can get a lot of different sounds. And yeah, I, the tone riders are really awesome. I mean, uh, I think for 100 euros, they're, Fantastic to put in a to, uh, in a modding uh, or they're fantastic to put in a mod project guitar like this one. Yeah, and I think this one with that yeah really weight relieved part is really comfortable to start out with modding as well so, because you have a lot of space inside. That's a good point. Yeah, not so much on the toggle switch side. Mm -hmm. That one is a little bit closer in space to get inside over there. Uh, but you have plenty of space where you can have a little bit of extra wire if you mm -hmm. need it. Um, yeah, so you have room to play. You can also insert some active stuff because you have enough space to put in a battery and also some preamp inside. That's, a cool, that's you, a cool idea. So if one day you want something different than the tone rise, you, you could put, put some uh, Fishman Fluence. In or there, EMGs or, or whatever. EMGs. Or you can also, what I did first with this guitar, when before I bought Tone Rider pickups, mm -hmm. uh, I have a guitar project for myself still in the locker, um, is to have a piezo bridge. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, bridge. Yeah, and I've put the piezo bridge on this one as well, and you can also add a piezo bridge to it without any problems. Yeah. So it's really great for modding. Yeah, you, you have enough you have enough, have enough space to insert the battery, the preamp for mm -hmm. for the piezo pickup and then get on to it. And what also helps with the piezo obviously is that it's quite resonant with these yeah, that makes sense. large hollow parts inside. It really goes also well with the piezo. Do you know what are, uh, the differences are to this to the newer model that's available on, uh, on the Toman website? From what I've seen, it's the stainless steel. Okay. Threads. And they have other pickups now. The, yeah. the first one I got had the Wilkinson. I mm -hmm. like those pickups actually. You still have them? No, I don't have them. That was the first one I had to ship back. Ah, the first. Ah, okay, the not first, this one. This the one first S had the Roswell then. These, this one had the Roswell, okay, and those were muddy as hell. The only amps I could really play it without having some muddy mess was your DSL20, mm -hmm. which was able to offer enough uh, high end, and uh, Hugenson Kettner, Grandmaster, also mm -hmm. managed to deliver enough high end, um, where I actually liked the sound of the guitar with the Roswell pickups. But you didn't enjoy it with your JTM? Not at all with the JTM. Way too much and bass. Way too much bass okay. and yeah, no clarity to it at all. It was all it was all a muddy mess. So definitely improvement on the newer version then. If they have different of pickups. course. A huge improvement. But I've also heard that the Roswell pickups were all around the place from someone else. He mm -hmm. said, I've heard in one of our comments uh, that his uh, Roswell pickups were too glassy and bright. Okay. So <laughs> the conclusion I would say is it's a great playing guitar, but Martin had to put some effort in. It's a great sounding guitar, but these are not the stock pickups anymore. 
It's not the stock wiring. And not the stock wiring, that's true. And so it's a fantastic mod platform and you can make it an awesome playing guitar. And yeah, just just be no no not be careful when you order Harley Bentons, but be aware that not all the Harley Bentons come right off the box and are perfectly playing. There are some lemons. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's just not to yeah, bash uh, Harley Benton or Thoman, not, not at all. It's just to keep in mind, especially when you're overseas and want to order them. Yeah. It's just the quality control is not... I mean, they're rather affordable, so it's not... That's the that's thing. The consistency. Is. You have you have to save some money somewhere to get it to that price point and... Yeah. yeah. There can be really perfect guitars within that range. Well... Any anything to add? No, not from my side. Thanks very much. I really like the guitar, and I hope you keep it. So maybe you you swap the pickups again and. <laughs> no, in fact, not currently not it's my most played guitar. Oh currently. wow! Even before my 355. Okay, well, speaks for for the guitar. Thanks for staying with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in another video, and have a good day. Bye. Bye, guys.